You and me stuck on the ocean now Nothing but waves and they're spilling in I wanna dry up but you Just keep on going, don't you? I don't even know how we got here All my reasoning have disappeared I wanna bury the hatchet And find the way back to her back to my channel for today's video i'm doing something a little bit different i'm gonna be recommending some spooky reads to you guys because obviously it's october it's spooky season so why not you're gonna hear my rabbit running around because that's what he does all day um but these are books that i haven't read yet i was going through all my shelves and i realized that i have like a plethora of spooky scary books and i don't know why because i'm actually like a massive chicken so there's really no reason for me to have all these scary books but I do so I pulled off the ones that looked the most interesting and the most promising for ones that if I get through my TBR um, I might gravitate towards and I wanted to tell you guys about them today because I figured I don't know if maybe some of you are going through a little bit of a reading slump or maybe you want a scary read but don't know which ones to gravitate to at the moment these are all also um, older books so they would have came out within maybe like the last two to five or maybe even before that years or so because I figured um you'd be able to find them at bargain stores for really really cheap online um instead of just constantly recommending new books that are coming out I wanted to kind of do a little bit of a throwback so that way you know it's a little bit more cost effective as well especially going through like the whole pandemic type of thing older books are kind of going to be a lot of people's friends because they're just going to be a little bit on the cheaper side so yeah uh, this is not me saying go out and find a bargain store and find these books because obviously COVID so stay home but if you're looking online for cheaper options you might be able to come across some of these books and a lot of them like they all seem pretty interesting so I want to talk to you guys about them today and yeah let's jump into the video talk to let me know what you think of this week's lipstick color because I think last week I did black and everybody loved it so I'm going for green this week which is a little bit harder to match up with an overall makeup look I don't think I did the best job today but let me know in the comments down below what you think I tried so a for effort um, I'm gonna do the same disclaimer that I do in every single one of my videos and that is if you hear my great Dane wanting or crying she's not hurt dying or anth about she's absolutely fine she's just dramatic but here on this channel we deal with it um, and yeah so that's that let's jump right in because I have I think six or seven books that I want to talk about today so let's go I just ate a cookie and I hope that you guys can't see that I did that the first book on my list is House of Furies and it's by Madeline Rowe it follows our main character who is fleeing her boarding school and takes refuge at an inn where she feels like at the beginning of it it starts out really really well apparently she's offered a job there she's working she thinks everything is going well until she realizes that the owner of the inn is a little bit on the eccentric side and dishes out his own brand of dark justice to people that he feels fit to do so and um our main character begins to realize that this is obviously an issue and there's a boy that checks into the inn who she knows to be innocent of a crime that he was alleged to have committed and she has to figure out how to get him out before the innkeeper or owner um, has him succumb to the fate that so many others have fallen to, I guess. I'm going to assume that the innkeeper kills these people because it says they come here to die at the top. So I'm assuming that that's largely what takes place is people will check in and the innkeeper kills them. Um, I'm not really sure where the use of furies come in. Um, from the various different folklores that I've read about them, they're almost like angry fairies or like human-like angry fairies. So I'm not really sure if, um, it's like the literal use of furies or just like a furious being. So I'm not sure. This one sounded pretty cool. Um, I think that there is an audiobook version for this as well. So if you wanted to look into that, I would do that as well. It's, I'm not gonna lie, it's not like high on my list uh to read but I figured I would put it on here just because it doesn't have like if you're not into monsters then this might be the route for you for just kind of like a creepy thriller like read for October so that's why this one is here okay so the next book that I have is called The Window and it's by Amelia Burnskill this oh what is this at the top it's easy to miss what you don't want to see oh that is so true I love that quote so oh and at the back it says secrets have a way of getting out nice and creepy so this is about twin sisters who are your quintessential twin sisters one is really athletic one is super quiet one's outgoing one's 
not blah 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 your quintessential twin sisters but they're very very close until one sister falls to her death sneaking out of her window um and everybody kind of obviously rules it as an accident she was sneaking out she fell but her sister is convinced that that is not the case her sister that fell and died was the really quiet kind of introverted one so she is starting to ask questions like where was she going like who was she trying to see stuff like that and as she digs deeper and deeper she realizes that her sister had a lot of secrets that um I guess nobody would have seen coming type of thing and that there were a lot of other players that were key in her death so this one's more of a murder mystery as well so we kind of veer away from the whole monster situation but it's definitely gonna be a little bit thriller-esque I think and then this cover is just really really creepy like the girl standing in the window there that's just I don't know why that creeps me all the way that it does but yeah so this one is also a little bit more thriller-esque-y, but it sounds, it's giving me a Good Girl's Guide to Murder vibes for some reason, and I don't know why. Um, but this is one that I would actually hope to maybe get to in November, because I really did enjoy A Good Girl's Guide to Murder, and I'm getting those vibes from this one, so I don't know. Maybe I'll try and get to this one, but if you guys are interested in it, read it this month, let me know what you think, let me know if it's worth the read. So the next book that I have is called Sweep, and it's the story of a girl and her monster written by Jonathan Oxer. This one is a monster story, but it seems like a really, really sweet monster story. It gives me, um, what's that movie? The BFG, the B big friendly giant type of thing. So our main character is a chimney sweeper and it's pretty much a very thankless, dirty job. And um, she finds herself in trouble one day because she gets caught in a chimney fire and she thinks that like, this is the end, this is how she dies, this is, this is it. But um, the monster rescues her and brings her up into this attic. And I guess it's about their friendship kind of blooming and also her having to hide this monster because it's, it's a literal monster. It's a golem made out of soot and ash. So, and it's been years since anybody has seen it. Um, and now it's come to rescue her. So it's going to be about, I guess, their relationship and friendship. And I don't know how it's going to end for the monster. I can't really foresee it ending well for the monster. But it's kind of, it seems like a cute monster story so if you're a chicken like me this might be a really really fun route because you're still getting the creepy monster-esque aesthetic but in like a kind of cutesy fun background is what I'm assuming it is like that's what I got from the synopsis so definitely give this one a try if you're a little bit more on the chicken side like myself so the next book that I have is How to Hang a Witch and it's by Adriana Mather. So we follow our main character, Sam, who moves to Boston, Massachusetts. Oh, I can never say this. Massachusetts. She moves to Boston. Um, and she's in the town where the Salem Witch Trials took place. And she's actually the descendant of one of the men who was known for carrying out the witch trials. And she gets sent to a school where there are three girls who are descendants of witches so automatically that's not going to be a likely friendship and she's also dealing with the fact that her new house has a ghost in it whom she kind of has a crush on because apparently he's very handsome and just wants her to stop touching his stuff so they he gives her a warning about a centuries old curse that she's kind of caught in the middle of as being the descendant of I, I don't want to call him a witch hunter but um sure the descendant of a witch hunter and she has to work with the descendants of the witches to kind of break this curse along with help from her very very cute friendly ghost so again doesn't see it's not going to be the creepiest book you read but it's got all the elements you want in a halloween book like you've got witches you've got ghosts the salem witch trials like this is your quintessential classic halloween read so i would absolutely give this one a try what does it say from the journal of cotton matter Mather, 1692. Oh, okay. Yeah, that's not important. Uh, mystery, twisting, intriguing atmosphere. This book has it all in such a perfect balance. You almost wonder if the product is something of a spell itself. Yeah, like I said, it literally has all the elements that you need for a Halloween book. This would be one that maybe I might throw on my TBR for my Halloween readathon. So yeah, definitely give this one a try. And it's an older one, so you'll definitely be able to find it for a fair price, I think. Okay. So the next book that I have is called The Dead House and it's written by Don Kurtigich. I'm really sorry if I pronounced that wrong. This is a book that I've been meaning to read for a while now, but one I can't get past the cover because it's actually very, very creepy. And it's about a girl who started a fire um, at her school and essentially burnt it down to the ground, killing a lot of students in um, its wake. 
but the girl who started the fire disappeared but her alter ego is being blamed for starting the fire um is what i'm getting from it it just and it's written in diary format so you're getting the perspective i believe of the girl's alter ego so which is creepy in itself because you're literally seeing our main character kind of descent into madness um I'm interested but also weary I've been kind of a little bit of a a little bit of an exclaimer here I've been a little bit weary of using books that clearly have a main character that is struggling with some sort of mental disorder and recommending them as a thriller or spooky read which obviously if our main character has an alter ego that set a building on fire there is something mentally unstable about her so and I don't want to portray this as like a fun spooky thriller when really and truly it's the main character struggling and, and needed help so I would recommend it for this month in a way but also be cautious of the fact that i'm not saying that this is a fun spooky read like this is a thriller-esque novel with a main character that could very well be suffering from some sort of multiple personality disorder of some sort it's not to make light of or make fun of i like to kind of keep fun spooky recommendations to like monster books or um really cliche murder mysteries but this one I put on here because I'm not sure if there's a supernatural element to it. If there is, then I would absolutely throw it in this category. But because I'm unsure, I'm cautiously putting it in this category. And if I do get to it, um, I will for sure do a review on it. Um, but like even like the diary itself is just really, really creepy. Where was that picture? Um, like the diary itself is just creepy. So yeah it could be it could be a fun halloween read it could also be a character suffering from some sort of mental disorder so just be cautious of that uh main characters with mental disorders are not fun spooky reads they're bringing light to mental disorders and it's not to to be made fun of or um for a type of enjoyment that monster books can give you so let's just have that straight but yeah um if you have read this let me know down below what you think your like what your thoughts are on it what does it say it says three dead students one vanished without a trace that's what it says at the top but the one is one with alter ego obviously the next book that i have is the call and it's by peter ogullen and <laughs> i've had this book for years too and i haven't been able to stomach reading it this is a monster book and it says three minutes to save your life and then there is no synopsis for it what it says on the inside is three minutes you wake up in a horrible land a horn sounds the call has begun two minutes the sid are close they're the most beautiful and terrible people you've ever seen and they've seen you one minute nessa will be called soon no one thinks she has any time to survive but she's determined to prove them wrong time's up could you survive the call and and then the back says it's a must read for anyone who's been sleeping too well at night that's enough to have me very very skeptical because i like to sleep so this is definitely it's it's a monster book of some sort it sounds really cool and it also sounds very very scary so anybody who's read this definitely let me know what your thoughts were the font is pretty big and it doesn't look like it's that long so this also might be one that i throw on my um 24 hour readathon tbr because i feel like that would be really fun but yeah I have no idea what happens in this so if you've read it please let me know if it's something that is going to prevent me from sleeping um and the last book that i have on this list is the near witch by ve schwab if you know or have if you know me or have been watching my videos for a while you know that victoria schwab is one of my favorite authors she's the author of two books that i'm actually gonna do an honorary mention for um but this book is about a small town that has this kind of running fairy tale type of theme where it's they tell this story about the near witch to essentially frighten children it's like a ghost story and it turns out that obviously this witch is actually real and she abducts children so we're following our main character who is going to throw herself into the fray and figure out why and what is going on and how to stop the near witch again this would be your perfect halloween read witchy supernatural 
fun for those who find fun in this. Um, I've heard really, really good things about the Near Witch. So I don't think they'll get to it this year and I'm a little bit sad about it. But if you guys can get to it and enjoy it, that would be great. Um, I'd be really, really happy if you guys could do it. So um, one for Neil Gaiman's fans. Ooh, um, if you like Neil Gaiman, this will be for you. But yeah, so that is the V. Schwab book. And the, actually, I decided to do an honorary mention because I was just talking about Victoria Schwab and I forgot about these two books. It's her um, Dark Duet duology. So you've got the Savage Song and our Dark Duet. These two books, I have read them. They're two of my favorite books. Um, yeah, there's two of my favorite books of all time. These are perfect. So, so perfect for October. If you have not read this duology, I highly, highly, highly recommend it. It is so beautifully dark victoria schwab has this intricate way of writing that just sucks you in the characters and these two books are so how do you they're so unique um the whole world is unique so it's literally monsters on earth you've got these three types of monsters Corsi, malachi and sunai that kind of have to live in, I don't want to say harmony but in unison with humans and you can buy your protection from these monsters because the government that is currently leading is very very corrupt um, and everything starts to fall apart where the monsters come on an uprise and the daughter of our government leader um, who originally oh I don't want to say too much about it <laughs> but yeah, everything starts to kind of go awry, awry when the monsters want to kind of come up and take things for their own and I mean, first of all, the monsters themselves, the three main monsters in this book, the depth that Victoria Schwab goes into describing them and the mind she would have had to create these monsters is so cool. Like, oh my goodness, if and when I write a fantasy or a horror, I hope that it can be a quarter as phenomenal as Victoria Schwab's writing. It's really, really good, and I highly recommend that you guys give these a try. Listen to the audiobook if you can. I literally listened to them one after the other, so it just felt like one really, really long, amazing book. So don't let the thickness scare you. The audiobook flies by if you go that route, or if you want to physically read it, go ahead, but definitely okay. give these. Okay guys, so that brings us to the end of our video. Thank you so much for watching. If you made it to the end, you know you're an MVP. Please make sure to comment, like, and subscribe before you go. Let me know down below if any of these books sparked your interest in if you think that you might pick one up this October. Also, let me know down below what your favorite creepy read for October is. And don't forget to follow me on my social media. I will have them linked somewhere on the screen, especially my Instagram because I am posting more um, consistently and more book reviews on my Instagram as well. So with that being said, I will see you in the next one. Bye.